Anderson will come off of turn number four to win number 65 career victory to Ryan Gustin. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, it was definitely not easy when you're racing with these guys. They're all fast, that's for sure. Uh, everyone raced each other with respect tonight. You know, clean, good race, and that's, uh, that's the way we like it. You've had an exciting year. It looks like the Gressel race team is back on their A game. Yeah, we, uh, we changed a bunch of stuff. It's a whole different race car than we've had. That's, uh, that's what we've needed here lately. We've been struggling and struggling and struggling, but uh, I think we hit on something here tonight. One scary moment there, you got up and over the berm a little bit like down at Salina, what happened? What would you think when that happened? Oh, I just locked him down and tried to come back on. Hopefully nobody wiped me out, which uh, nobody did, thankfully, and uh, it all worked out. Are you sitting in the catbird seat now? You really don't have the hunt points to worry about. You just go out there and win as many races as you can. Yeah, it's definitely a relief, you know, not having to just be consistent. You can actually, you know, force the issue sometimes where the other guys at this point ain't going to force it. So you can try to use that to your advantage as much as you can to a point and uh, hopefully go win some more races. Jason Hughes turned the quickest lap in his qualifying group, but after the invert was unable to transfer to the main event. Instead, he earned the 13th starting position for the feature race via a B main and ultimately claimed the runner-up position at the end of 40 laps. Uh, we had a real good car, just a, a bad heat race to give us a bad starting spot. and uh, The track was pretty racy, but it was kind of jammed up there early. We had to kind of wait around a while before we could get going. Speaking of jammed up here on the left rear corner on back here, you remember what happened there? I don't know for sure, but there's nothing straight on this thing after tonight. <laughs> A good night for you in the hunt points. Both of those competitors you're running with were behind you tonight in the finishing order. Yeah, they was right there. We need to be a little farther ahead than that. So to, to gain back in points we've lost, and, you know, we've got four more nights, so we're just going to go out there and race as hard as we can every night and see how it turns out in the end. When we talked to you at Salina, you said you might have a little bit of downtime. You were right there by home, and you said you were going to be right back in the shop next day, were you? No, we got the cars out and washed them up and worked on everything Sunday and Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday too, right up in time to leave, but uh, you know, whenever you're at home for just a few days, you don't have much time off. Do you feel like you got this thing clicking once again? Uh, we've had a pretty good race car. Uh, right before the hunt, we've kind of settled in on what we was going to do and kind of stuck with our game there and hadn't changed a whole lot since the hunt started. And uh, The car's been pretty good night in and night out. We just got to have a little bit of luck to go with the good car. Finishing third was Johnny Scott, who entered the night just one marker behind Rodney Sanders in the hunt for the Casey's Cup. Outside pole sitter Zach Vanderbeek finished fourth at the Checkers and recorded his third straight top five finish in the last three hunt races. Fourth starting Rodney Sanders recorded his impressive 11th hunt race top five finish by coming away fifth in the final rundown. On Friday, the Touring Titans roll into Chateau Raceway in Lansing, Minnesota, where they will look to dethrone local favorite and track champion Brandon Davis as the hunt continues with race number 14. For USMTS.com, this has been Sam Stecklin reporting.